Lord Moylan. Uh, my Lords, uh, the noble Lord, Lord Hannon of Kingsclere, asks what the purpose of this bill is. We all know what the purpose of this bill is. It is to advance an agenda uh, for, of people who believe in the existence of animal rights and to embed them at the heart of government, bossing everybody about. Uh, it's, it's a bad bill, not simply for that reason, but more importantly, I'll explore in a moment, because it changes the moral basis on which we have habitually treated animals well in this country. And I'll come back to that in just a moment, because I'm going to leave to others um, who have already spoken in some cases comments on the, the practical difficulties of putting this bill into effect and the problems that it's likely to give rise to. Uh, I always thought myself that it was the responsibility of this Parliament to hold ministers to account but we're now to have a committee roaming around Whitehall doing the job for us, it seems. But the clause that strikes me as most extravagant, however, um, is the one that gives the Secretary of State the unfettered power to declare, should he wish, uh, that an earthworm is a sentient being. Uh, my Lords, this is a power greater than that given by God to Adam in the Garden of Eden, which, as I recall, was restricted to the power of naming animals. Here we are giving the Secretary of State the power to reclassify them uh, almost without check. But I do want to come back to this, my point about the, the moral basis on which we treat animals well. Uh, I, 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 I would have loved this quotation I've written out from Lord Keynes, that practical men who believe themselves to be quite exempt from any intellectual influence, are usually the slaves of some defunct economist. Madmen in authority who hear voices in the air are distilling their frenzy from some academic scribbler of a few years back. Now, of course, I don't mean to refer in any sense to my noble friend on the front bench um, in that regard. But, but Lord Hannon has, has put his finger on who the academic scribbler is. Uh, and I well remember in my first year as an undergraduate walking past Blackwell's and seeing prominently displayed in the front uh, window uh, a copy of Professor Peter Singer's Animal Liberation. Uh, he had, um, in 1975, as a young man, undergone a sort of convulsive conversion to vegetarianism. Uh, and this was his attempt to work out some rationale for what he was doing. And there were three points, essentially. The first is that people are not better or superior uh, to animals. Uh, the second was that what we have in common is a spectrum, we sit on a spectrum of sentience. This puts us on the same level as the animals. And the third, as indicated by my noble friend Lord Herbert of South Down, was a sort of crude utilitarianism uh, which uh, makes no distinction between humans and animals. And 45 years on, this book has, has spread throughout the world. It has become a text for all of those who wish to promote the rights of animals. And the logical consequence of it is that we be driven in the direction of veganism and the consumption solely of non-sentient plants. And I couldn't have asked for a more convenient introduction in that sense to what I was about to say than the, noble, than the speech of the noble Lord, Lord Safraz, who with uh, consummate commercial skill has pointed us entirely in the direction of that veganism. And not only veganism, but also behaviour which respects and prevents harm to any sentient creature. And that goes well beyond what we eat, as other noble lords have said. Now that's all, all, all OK. If, if members of the House of Lords want to drive the country without asking them very much, we're told this is hugely popular. I don't know where this evidence comes from that this is hugely popular. But if, if, if noble lords want to drive the country in the direction of veganism um, on such a basis and on the basis of some movie I haven't yet seen about an improbable friendship between a scientist and an octopus, I'm sure it is a tearjerker, um, that, that's absolutely fine. That's what the, the House of Lords is free to do. But what worries me about it is that we have is this we, we have cited here in the House a whole swathe of humanitarian legislation that has gone back the last 200 years protecting animals. Um, contrary to um, uh, what Singer and those people would say about the abolition of the distinction 
between humans and animals. All of that legislation has been based on our moral obligations as human beings, rational and endowed with conscience. It is why it is called humanitarian legislation. It is not based on some assumed rights of animals. Now, all of that, not the legislation, but the moral basis for the legislation, is all now to be swept away by a government embedding at the heart of our, our legislation the notion of sentience as the driver for how we should treat animals. The whole moral basis is being changed and replaced by this calculus of sentience. This is a very, very bad step. It reduces our obligations as people to something which is going to be the, 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 the subject of endless judicial review and footling arguments about rules and laws and whether ganglions are the same as, uh, as brains and whatever, whatever else might come up in the course of these discussions. So I'm really very concerned about this bill, my lords. It does nothing at all good for animals, but it does do a, a great disservice to the moral foundation of our society.